Okay, so we switched back over to Ambrose and his group. So we have Ambrose, we have Kismet, and Ambrose's little sister, Amy, has joined the group. Now, Amy is a child, and she is not a combatant, so she won't be helping them in any of the fights, but she will be tagging along. Overall, slur, not. <laughs> Okay, that much, wasn't much of a scene with those characters. We're back to Ansel again. Oh my god. I can't believe this is the dialogue I wrote.
placeholder graphic. So it looks absolutely nothing, nothing like, this is definitely not the, <laughs> oh my god, this was not the most recent character portrait I had for this guy. I had a different, I recreated his model completely. He, he's supposed to look like a kid. He was supposed to be like, um, 16 or 17 or something like that. He, I don't know what the fuck he looks like here. <laughs> oh, yeah, he looks ridiculous. And his, and his character sprite, this is going to be hard to reconcile. His character sprite looks nothing like the character portrait. Okay, so we picked up our new character, Zealous. They're both at maximum fucking level. So every fight, if there in fact are any fights, should be really goddamn simple. See what, uh, it's, I'm not actually supposed to be at a max level and that wasn't even a bug in the game. What happens is the game starts with your characters being at maximum level. And then you go and, um... You fight that battle that happens in the in the beginning, and it ratchets back your level right after the end of that. Now, that didn't happen in this playthrough because I ran into that bug while fighting the dragon, and I had to sort of re. I didn't want to restart the entire game, and I don't have a save uh, points, any saves or anything like that. So I just sort of pushed the starting point of the game to right before um, we encounter that dragon. So all the characters start out at maximum level and they're still there. So I had mentioned before that there was a little bit of a branching pathway through this game where it involved this cabin. If you encounter the body and check the door and then go speak to the lumberjack in town, he'll come back out here and take the body away. If the body is gone, you can get in. There's another body in here. Oh, and he moved. Uh, I can walk on the table. There's nothing in here. <laughs> There was nothing in here. I, I was supposed to put something in here. Apparently, I didn't. Okay, so let's move on. Now, the, the part that we were able to access in this, this forest before is this area here. But this continues for quite a way. You don't really have to worry about getting lost. Uh, there is a road. But it, it'll pretty much guide you where you need to go. It's sort of like uh, still after the... The storm waters haven't receded completely, so pathway, you gotta more sort of weave around the flooded areas. I don't even have any enemies here. All the enemies were up north. <laughs> there should have been swamp beasts or something like that down here. Oh, you know what? I did get...
Oh, you know what? The soul of wolf. I don't have the soul of wolf. The, the alpha wolf. Whatever, who cares? Alright, we've come back to the, uh... Come back to the road. So you just follow the road. Oh, nope, can't. <laughs> Gotta go around again. It's been a long time, people. I I don't remember every aspect of this, even though I was the one who built it. I know it less than I know some other games. Like, like I can navigate the environment in Xenogears, most of the environments in Xenogears, better than I can in this own freaking game that I actually made with my own goddamn hands. <laughs> Oh, it's five o'clock. I should be doing something else right now. Uh, I'll stick around and... I'll stick around a little bit and finish this episode. I was going to go for a run at five o'clock. But I guess I can hold off on that for a little bit to make sure I get this finished. It only take me another 20 minutes. Plus I have to finish drinking my protein shake. <laughs> oh my god, this, the lack of subtlety is amazing. It just sort of walks up. <laughs> Fuck, this is not going to work right. Zealous is too high of a level. He's going to win this fight. This is supposed to be a scripted loss. He was supposed to lose this fight. It's a scripted loss, but he's too overpowered. Oh, apparently I, uh... Apparently I... I... He made the possibility of him winning. Okay, so apparently I scripted what would happen if you won that fight. You were supposed to lose, but you can win, apparently. I don't remember doing that. Where we were going? <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, we're low level again. So I'm gonna give... We don't have the items. I can't equip any of this shit. <laughs> Amy is actually a, uh... The fuck... Amy Ansel, what the fucking fuck? I, I don't know. <laughs> Why isn't Kismet following him? She should be following him. I don't know what's going on. This is buggy as fuck. Hello, the skeleton. Skeleton is slain. <laughs> We're
We're in a graveyard, by the way. Hello. Oh, it's erotic. The, uh, there's no character portrait. All right, so they're sort of trapped. And regardless of what they do or where they go, they just sort of loop back around into the graveyard. So there's no escaping the graveyard until they stop whatever it is that is trapping them here. It's kind of weird. And honestly, I'm a little unsure as to how I pulled it off. I don't remember how I managed to make the game engine do this, because it doesn't seem to be something that it's normally capable of. But anyway, what you got to uh, encounter is over here. Oh, shit. It is over here, but I forgot you got to get a key first. A lot of the dungeons, I, I found myself unable to design. ran into a little bit of a problem there because the cord in my microphone actually fell out while I was trying to record the commentary for this. So I kind of have to form a post-gameplay commentary here. So I wasn't exactly sure where I was going with what I was saying earlier, so I'll just sort of wing it from here. Oh my god, the fact that I'm using those stupid um, default sprites placeholders. Oh, look, actually a crystal. A minor soul of defense. Now that skeleton was what you needed to kill to gain access to the building up at the top of the map. I did not actually have that many different souls you could equip in this. At some point during development, I just stopped creating new items, figuring I would go back and do that kind of stuff later. Of course, I never got to it because I never finished the game. Say so we can find our way back up here. I have a lot of uh, this key. It doesn't appear in key items. That's weird. You'd think I would have put it there. Uh, getting the key really only just sort of set a flag inside of the game's uh, memory. And when you go to touch this door, it checks that flag in the memory and sees do you have the key or not. It's not actually checking for something in your inventory. Okay, so we're inside the ossuary, and, well, there's a dude over here. <laughs> the music in this place is creepy as fuck. <laughs> He's not moving. He's supposed to be moving.
All right, so we're going to fight this weirdo. <laughs> it seems as though a lot of the characters never really quite say what they mean or are intentionally cryptic with the way that they speak. Jeez, I'm talking about that like, like I wasn't the person who did it. So, we have these two creatures here. Should have been able to see her. So, here we are. Maybe we can leave. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, he's not even here. So, that's the end of this episode. Now, I know I'm not going to get a chance to talk about what happens, because it's going to go right into the next scene. So, let's just discuss a little bit about what just happened. It's becoming clear as we move on that there are other powers at work here and there are a lot of different sides of the conflict that are sort of opposing each other and possibly vying for power in this sort of post-apocalyptic world now you just saw these two here you saw the errata which was clearly not a human distorted features and all that kind of stuff but one that seemed overall rather friendly then you had Cormac, who looks more human, but has a lot of discoloration in his face. He's red. Could be tattoos. Could be a mutation. Who who knows? But he becomes much more hostile and actually fights us, even though he feels like it wasn't... Uh, he said it was necessary, but, you know, it really wasn't. You beat him, but he says, like, yeah, well, you didn't really beat me. I would have crushed you if... I had the chance. And he says something that's actually kind of important there. He says something along the lines of it's unbecoming of a hero to uh, serve would-be gods. Now, there are a number of gods which are presented in this story. You know, one that we saw in the very beginning of the game was the Gestalt, the um, sort of demon god thing that was killed at the beginning of the game, which was actually killed at the end of the game, if that makes sense. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to stick around and figure out how all these pieces fit together. <laughs>